Yes, people, we are back. This is the Rangers Junior, and I'm your host, Bobby Wines. And what are we saying, people? And I'm joined with a beautiful man with a beautiful beard, man like Stevie. Stevie, how are you doing this evening? I'm good, mate. How are you? Good to be I'm with. very well, very well. And obviously, the host with the most, but today I'm taking his place. Scotty too, Harry. Scotty, how are you doing? You all right? Aye, not bad at all, Bobby. Not bad at all. Good all to right. have you on again, mate. Brilliant oh, to be talking perfect, to you. Perfect, perfect. Guys, listen, thank you so much for having me as your host today. If you're joining, please make sure you like and subscribe. And also, guys, it's an open topic tonight. So please, if you're in the comments, jump in. Scotty is going to obviously help me out with like putting all the comments in the chats and stuff. Guys, before we go ahead, Stevie, you know, we know the fastest happened on Wednesday night, um, Wednesday afternoon, should we say. Stevie, just could you just quickly give us a quick summary of your, your whole thoughts on, obviously, the pitch not being able to be played, the, the farce that um, Scotland has went into a meltdown because it's obviously including um, with Rangers. So, yeah, please take it away. Yeah, I mean, the, the entire situation is a bit of a shambles. I mean, it's a complete shambles from start to finish. Um, mm-hmm. It really is. Uh, I mean, obviously, Dundee, the Premier, Scottish Premiership side, they should have a pitch which is sufficient to actually host games. Um, yeah. I did a wee bit of digging into this. I read an article in The Courier, um, and there was an interview for about three years ago with Brian Robertson Jr., who was the former... Dundee groundsman. This is 2021. Okay. I've got the quote here. This is 2021 because they've been doing the championship. There are about five games called off, I think, in that season. And his quote was, um, we turn it under soil heating on. Sorry, we turn on under house under soil heating, and you may get a flood. This is the winter time. Um, these things you have to weigh up. Whichever way you go, there's more problems. The amount of rain and snow we've had, everything is soaked, and the drains we have are old, are old and aren't able to really handle it. Now, it's three years ago, and they've done nothing to update those facilities since. So it's got worse and worse and worse, and now we're in a situation. Um, it's really poor. I, I, like, they've not got money. Like they, they obviously can't afford to, like, they can do the pitch, but they kind of, like, dig out the drains and whatever. So it's a mm. lot of cost involved. So I've got sympathy in that regard. But the fact that it's been coming for so long, um, it's poor. Um, and then the statement about the... The guy saying about the climate change, I mean, that's just funny. I mean, it's it's kind of embarrassing, to be fair. I mean, does that climate change stop at the street? And doesn't it go across to the island ice? You know? It's like, yeah. Come on. I don't... I know their statement, like Ranger's statement, was really strong. Um, and I understand they're annoyed about it. Um, but, yeah, it's just kind of created a storm. Um, we just want to get the game played. If it's behind closed doors at Ibrox or whatever, I don't really care. Just get the fixture done. I, I, do you know what? Just on what uh, Stevie just said, Scott. Scott, I want you to just come mm-hmm. in. I know me and you, we've touched on it. The, the old Grizzlies gave a statement, and that's quite damn a few years back, right? But see, when you hear that, Scotty, um, what what brings alarm bells to you when you when you hear what the, the quote Stevie said there? It reinforces everything I've been saying for Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Completely reinforces. I went on to Gallant Few last night, and I had a good chin wag about it with boys as well. Um, really, really unhappy how this situation's been allowed to unfold. And when I say, I say key word there, allowed to unfold because the SPFL's let it happen. Now, that groundsman, as far as I'm aware, has lost his job, but I might be wrong. No, I'm you're not right. sure he's lost his job. And they, fired, uh, they fired the Dundee United groundsman, didn't they? So, he starts next season, but they've got a fun for Glasgow in just now. But the fact right. that they've had the resources cut after COVID, it's almost like they're getting made the scapegoats. So I've got a yeah. bit of sympathy for those two. Definitely. 100%. But if but you can only do Bobby, you'd probably agree with me, with me on this. You can only do a job with the tools you're given. Of course. If these, of course. If these, yeah. if these guys can't have not got the proper tools, proper drainage to begin with, then they're, they're immediately up against an uphill battle for me, Bobby. Mm-hmm. Do you know what? Listen, just just to conclude on this, Stevie, I'm gonna to come to you. 15 seconds. What happens if the pitch, if the fixture cannot be played? 15 seconds, here we go. They've got to switch to neutral venue. Okay, was behind, I mean, hopefully not behind closed doors, but it's got to go neutral venue, get the fixture completed. Um, it's got to be done in the next two weeks, I'd say, as quick as possible. Just shout out, Lauren. Thank you for the comment. Scotty, 15 seconds. What is the next? Same question that I said to Stevie there. What about yourself? How do you conclude this matter if the next fixture doesn't go ahead? I think it will go ahead because I think SPFL released a statement last night saying that they've got a plan in place now, third time hockey. Um, I think it's probably going to be played at McDermott Park, Gary Star Road. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your input on that. Now, obviously, believe it or not, um, 
as the sun goes up, the sun guns down, whichever one you want to see about climate change, we do have a game at the weekend. And it, it, Ross County away. Now, um, gentlemen, if you've ever made that trip, but what a trick it is, by the way. So shout out to everyone that's going to be making the travel and uh, big up to yourself. Make sure you travel and, um, very safe. And if you are driving, please <laughs> be careful because climate change can lead to flooding, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> um, Stevie, I'm going to come to you on this one. Ross County, you know, um, we've had some joy. We've had a few problems. When you hear, when you see the fixture of Ross County, what, what, what comes to your mind? Well, you kind of see the minute ago, a really long trip. Um, but, <laughs> you know, it's, like you say, I think most of the time we've got a really good record there. A couple of recent mm-hmm. flip-ups here and there. But uh, generally, yeah, we've got a decent record. Um, and it's a decent surface, um, which is good. But, yeah, I, I think just go there and, Start strongly. Don't start like we started last Sunday. Total opposite of that, please. Um, and just you know, hit the ground running. And really, this is the time. This is a cup finals. Like every game's a cup final. And we keep saying it, but just start quickly and really get a couple of quick goals and blow them away. Um, because this is a championship we're going for. So we need to do it. Steve, you see if you're a Rangers player right now. What? What? Where do you think your your mind is? I've got no idea because last Sunday, to be honest, I was expecting us to start quickly. Yeah, and it's the worst possible start. You just think to yourself, you know what? I don't know about yourselves, but when I th- I'm a bit older than both of you, but when I think of old form games, I think of like John Brown, Ian Ferguson in the tunnel, absolutely gone ballistic. Like they can't wait to get out there and get started. Mm-hmm. And we were asleep for like that first half last week. That was crazy. So I'm sure it was just, you know, maybe the, the occasion got to them. So hopefully they've kind of they've regrouped. They've ignored the storm of the, the Dundee game being postponed again and they're just focused solely on Ross County. Um they've had a good few days training, hopefully. Um, and they go out there and they make it count. Um, I know they're great to come back last week. I'm not taking that away from them, but you know, just be really professional. Um, I hope they're professional anyway. Um, and they take it for the first minute and they, um, they get the three points. Scotty, Stevie's saying be professional, make it count. We're in there for a title, we're trying to win a championship here. You're, you're a Rangers player, Scotty. The game's been cancelled midweek. Where's your mind? Where are you? <laughs> You're on mute, Scotty. <laughs> I'll, I'll never get away from that habit. So I know the manager says that old famous quote, Bobby, about um, we, we go again, we go to the next match, your focus immediately changes. But does it really, if you're a player mm-hmm. in these types of situations? Um, that's twice. I, if I was a Rangers player, I would have been a wee bit pissed off. I think that's fair to say that you're trekking away up there for the second time. And it's the second cancellation for the same reason. Um, changing your mindset on to Ross County. I think if the players would be able to do it fairly quickly because they've had to this season because of the amount yeah. of games that's been um that's that's been going on between Europe, cup fixtures, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So I think the boys will be in good spirits and I think they'll be well tuned into this match. They might actually be a wee bit annoyed going into the match. They might just which, be itching for Yeah. Which may actually, you know, some play, some some individuals play better when they're angry, and you know, um, let, let's let's sig- segue into that, Stevie. I mean, I'm gonna jump right into it, okay? Um, it's Twelve o'clock kickoff, I believe. Um, yes. uh, I beg your pardon, Scott. If you could get the slides up for the team lineup, I beg your pardon, please. Yeah, who? Yeah. But when do you want up? Uh, the team want? lineup, the eleven, the starting eleven, if right. possible. Just all right. As yours, do you want Stevie's or yeah. mine? Stevie's, please. Got. Stevie, top. So it's, you're obviously you're going into Ross County, going up to Dingwall. We've got there, okay. Talk me through the team. Yeah, just obviously very similar to last week with the the back five, um, same defence essentially. Um, obviously Dio in the midfield. He's um, got a broken thumb. I'm reliably informed yeah. to Scotty. Um, so mm-hmm. yeah, go with Aye. Lundstrom. I, I mean, I don't see the need for two two sitting midfielders at Ross County away. You know, Lundstrom's mm-hmm. enough. Um, Suter can push up um, and just really try and like you know. Take the game with the scruff, get Lawrence, get Todd on the ball, you know, work it wide, a really good tempo. And uh, Rabi, you know, Matondo, he's he's on fire, you know, just give that guy a start. To, to me, the rest of the season, him or Sima or both of them have got to start every game. We need to go here and win these games, you know, like really dominate and show yeah. the call we've got. Um, so, yeah, just be really offensive. Um, Dessers had a good game last week, you know, get him service. Um, Silva as well, you know, there's, there's enough talent there to really. I'll do a number on those counties. 
Stevie, just but just before I go to Scotty, Stevie, do you think we helped Dessers last week? I mean, I know he's got his critics, but to me, I mean, the big money, he never, you know, he never shirks a challenge. He's, he's always there. He, he leads that line. He's really mm-hmm. fed up lucky. Um, not to get his goal. Um, but yeah, I, I think certainly that that formation and that, you know, somebody pushing up, somebody pushing wide. I think that does help him. Yeah. yeah does and just touching on, um, sorry, Stevie, to cut you off. Beg your pardon, Stevie. Rabbi Matondo. Scotty, I texted you and said he deserves a start. Stevie, I mean, what's the story? What's the script with Rabi Matondo? <laughs> last last two games, he's been a great sub. He's came on. He's done what he's had to do. Let's be, let's say it, let's have it right. Stevie, he rescued the point. He rescued the league championship, didn't he? Absolutely. I mean, he deserves his start. I mean, he's obviously coming back for injury, so he's really not quite hundred percent ready to play ninety minutes. But yeah, get him in there. Scott right on the bench. Um, certainly for the rest of the season. Matondo should be starting. And if Scott is going to be involved, it should be him who's the sub, impact sub. Um, yeah, he's got to play. I mean, look at his last two games versus Hibs. And again, with Celtic last week, almost identical, brilliant, brilliant goals. Um, yeah, he's got to play. Um, see, just one wee thing, nipping back to you were saying about the, the players being angry. I wondered yeah. about that with the Rangers statement because it was so strong. Mm-hmm. It was almost, I don't know if they're trying to do like a siege mentality. They almost like motivate the players more. I don't know, maybe. Um, it's just, well, there was a famous Scotsman that that um, breeded our mentality, them against us, and it was Sir Alex Sir Ferguson. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, Sunus as well, to be honest. But like, Sir Alex Ferguson said that. Oh, you know, Sir Furious, not Sir Alex. Sir oh, Furious, a bigger fan. Um, Sir Alex Ferguson said that you know he had to create a mentality where I made sure the players knew it was them against us. And do you know what? I don't mind that with Philip. Come on, Scotty. I'm going to come into you two seconds there. I don't mind that mentality because. Do you know what? I'm sorry. Was it soon as said? Um, there's a lot of people in Scotland who don't like Rangers. A lot of people in Scotland don't like people that are successful and they come mm-hmm. hand in hand. Scotty, just on the back of what Stevie said, obviously with his lineup, I mean, one, do you agree with him, what he said? And two, would you change that lineup? Oh, yeah, there's plenty I would change about that lineup, Bobby. <laughs> Um, I'll, get, I'll get into that in a minute. See, when you're talking about players being angry, see if you annoy yeah. Todd Cantwell enough, that's when you see Todd Cantwell at his best. Mm-hmm. I think there was a match earlier on at Easter Road in the season where, um, remember, two of the, the Hibs players kind of went in on Cantwell at the same time and put him into like, a billboard, etc. Two minutes later, Cantwell comes out and bangs one in the back game and wins mm-hmm. a match. That's the Todd Cantwell we need to see in his running mm-hmm. going into the end of the season. That's the one I want to see all the time, but we especially need him to turn up for the next six matches. I want to line up, I wouldn't have Sterling at left back because last week against Celtic, we really missed that balance on the left hand side. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Tom Lawrence last week uh, had his worst match in a Rangers jersey for me. Mm-hmm. So that's the two immediate changes I would make. And Connor Goldson, he'd be on the bench. Wow. Well, that guy, need, wow. guy needs a break. Guy needs a break. He gets subbed. Why did he get subbed at the end uh, uh, with, uh, with two minutes left at the match last weekend? Something's going on with the big man. He's not recovered since probably Bojan Majofsky at Aberdeen. Since the ball went over his head and Majofsky ran on and scored. He's not recovered since. Stevie, Stevie, that's a bold statement. Connor Goldson, not to start. Yeah, I'd be amazed. Unless he's carrying something. Maybe he's got a knock and Balogun will come in. I mean, I wouldn't like if Balogun starts. I'm a big fan. I'd be fine with that. You know, he's a, he's a really good replacement. Loads of pace. Um, quite a cultural defender, I would say. So yeah, yeah. if that was the case, great. But no, I'd be surprised if um, if Connor doesn't stop. Scotty, can you put your team up, please, for me? And guys, if you are listening and watching, please drop a like. Please share as well. We're trying to build the channel. Please drop a like and share as well. Make sure you follow the guys as well. Scotty. <laughs> uh, Stevie said something there. He said, "I don't think we need two holding players." Stevie, you've 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 rang a bell for me, right? We're going to dominate possession, aren't we? Right? 100%. So, is there a need for the two? And, Scotty, why I've just said that, explain to me your team, please. Have you seen my key player? <laughs> I thought that would make you laugh, Bobby. That's the only reason I did that. That's my real key player, yeah. That's what I just texted Ross earlier on that says, you need to tune in tonight. <laughs> Ross says, I'm harsh on Dessers, so I'm not the night. I'm not going to be the night. So, there, there's my team there. I'm going with Butland, Tavernier, Balogun, Suter, Yilmaz, if fit, if no, I'm putting Borna in. Exactly. Uh, Lundstrom, I think the manager really likes Kevin Dowell. I think yeah. Clermont's got a soft spot for Kevin Dowell, so I think you're going to see him play. 
because Dibble's left footed, he's going to bring a balance and he's going he's very composed on the ball. Um and then I've obviously got the same front four as Stevie. So I'm just gonna put the question out, you know. Um we're we're in possession right now. Okay, so uh Lundstrom's got the ball from the back four. Scott, I'm gonna stick with you. Mm-hmm. The shape, Kieran Dow, he obviously done well when he came on against Celtic. Is there a need for the two, or is that just the starting formation? Dibble's going to be playing in the eight, sort of playing a wee bit higher up, Lundstrom in the six. Dibble's going to be going forward to Rick Cavok on Ross County, basically. He's a very creative minded player, which is why I've put him in. He's got a goal in him, he's got a one day left foot, he can have an impact. Um, it's just it's just whether he's fit enough, but I think Clement rates him, so I think he will start. I don't think Tom Lawrence is going to drop back in for Diamandi. I think he's going to go with Dill. Okay. Stevie, um, it's a very attacking lineup. You know, um, Scott has just said dill has got a Harry Potter settings. You know what I mean? Lingard and Liviosa. Do, do, do you agree with that, or, or do you have any rebuttal to that? No, I mean, yeah, for what I've seen, which has been very limited, you know, half a dozen games, he, he does look a decent player. Um, I don't think he did that great when he came on last week, to be honest, but. It's very difficult to come on an all form game, um, especially on that tempo and that pressure. Um, yeah. But yeah, he's, he's decent. Again, if he was to start, he looks like a player, especially at Ross County, he can definitely do us a turn. Um, and he's obviously a wee bit more offensive um, than Looney. So yeah, he would, he would definitely push up a bit. Um, and that balance to the left foot as well. Yeah, no, I'd be fine with that. But I don't know. I don't know. He's definitely not going to get any minutes in him. So I expect him and Lawrence will change at some point. Mm-hmm. Do, do you think he'll do much running if we're we're going to dominate possession? Midfield for Rangers, you need to, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. 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 I just want to. I just want to uh, do a sidestep to um, serial Dessers. You know, we saw the picture of Shanklin there, and I think we can't ignore it. Thanks for that, Scotty. <laughs> <laughs> um, Steve, I want to stay with you quickly. Um, not not to shy away from the topic here, but I asked you the, asked you earlier. Like, do you think we do enough for them? You know. Sometimes you feel sorry for him, then you think sometimes yourself, he doesn't do enough. Where are you with Dessers right now? I guess that it's, it's kind of, it's going to sound like a Michael Owen obvious thing to say, but the better Rangers play, the better Dessers plays. You know, we've got that quick tempo, we're working it wide, we're getting crosses in. He looks a far better player. Sometimes he can get a wee bit almost um, isolated mm-hmm. and he struggles. You know, his touch isn't great. Um, but yeah, it's not, I guess in the transition, as long as he's getting that support, he's fine. So I, I take your point. Um, certainly, the games we've been poor this season, you know, he will look really sh- kind of shy of confidence. But yeah, he's getting back. He had that spell there for a while where he's really lost his form, I think. Um, but his confidence is definitely back. So, yeah, I think he'll have a great run in. Scott, Scott, I come to you with the same question. Uh, what's your thoughts? Um, Dessels. I think Dessels has been setting the tempo recently. I think he's been. Really, really good. Um, it doesn't even pain me to say that. I've, I've been probably his biggest critic amongst the Rangers support this season because mm-hmm. I don't think he's our number nine going forward. I think we should assign J- uh, Shankland in January, but he's here. He's setting a tone. I think the press against Celtic last Sunday was very disjointed because Dessers was the one doing the press and it wasn't getting backed up off of Scott Wright and Silva. Whereas mm-hmm. when you've seen Seema coming in, Seema brought a, a, a much better balance on that right-hand side. Pressed up high, got beyond defenders, um, allowed Dessers time to like do his job a wee bit more. Mm. I think it's fair to say. What I would I like to have seen last Sunday was Dessers peel off onto Liam Scales because I think that's where Celtic's kind of Achilles heel was. If you can get in between Liam Scales and Greg Taylor, you're going to get some some joy. Whereas I thought mm. when he's marking Cameron Carter, Vickers, Vickers is a good defender. We need to be honest about it. And I thought Vickers handled Dessers fairly well. Dessers yeah. gave him a good game right enough, but um, I want to see him getting a bit more support, especially see when Matondo comes on last last Sunday, Bobby. You mm-hmm. see the complete difference in the shape, the energy, like the lot of it. Now, I'm not saying it's going to be like that for mm-hmm. 90 minutes on Sunday, but it's going to be like that for 60. Yeah, and, and do you know what? Listen, football's all about phases, isn't it? Spells, mm-hmm. moments and stuff, you know, and it's in those moments what you can do. Stevie, we're talking about being direct, you know. Does Dessers need more direct support? Um, let me elaborate on that. Does he need someone like Matondo that is going to get the ball and has his head up? He's not going to put his head down and dribble and doesn't see Dessers. Because we've seen, you know, I think it's very fair to say that 
some of the support can be very frustrated with their sons being offside, not watching his line, missing chances that we probably think he should bury. But as we say, there's no point buying a striker if you're not going to serve, give him service. Yeah. My question to you, Steve, is like, are we really giving him that service? And I'm trying to play devil's advocate here. Yeah, you've got a point. I mean, that's kind of why I, I suggested, you know, Matondo. Yeah. Asima, one, one or both have got to play. You know, for the rest of the season, that you know, league's there to be won. Go out and win it. You think back, like, kind of harken back here, but like, in my mind, what are Smith Rangers teams? Both of them, they were the yardstick. And you look at the title run-ins of his teams, you look at fixtures, like, oh, that's a tricky fixture. And we yeah. go out and annihilate them. Or oh, whoever we're playing would really just put them to the sword. It was like, you know, put it out of sight. Um, you know, you go offensive. And we've got players there. We've got Matondo. We've got Sima. He's not ready for 90 minutes yet, but he's almost ready. You know, use these guys. Just, yeah, get them up and support the Um Games like Ross County, you know, like Tav, he's been a bit more kind of like, almost defensive this season, so like you say, because they're right back. But, do you know what I mean? He's been a bit more cautious. So he can probably throw a bit more caution to the win there. Um, you know, try and get a couple of assists. So, yeah, there's enough there for Dessers to, to be utilised properly. But, yeah, definitely Matonda for the rest of the season. And Seema, that would be my, my suggestion. Just have no fear. Go out and win these games. I have no fear. I love that, Stevie. I have no fear. Scotty, Ross County, do you have any fear from them as an opposition and as an attacking force? Excuse no. my French. <laughs> I wouldn't say they're the most attacking force. They have got a few players that could be, you know, let's just say Pernickiki or a bit... Nice segue, my friend. Thank you very much. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, is there anything to be cautious about? Um, I think the, the the boy that's signed for Hearts in a pre-contract, Jan Danda, is probably their best player. I like I don't him. Think, I don't think Simon Murray's gave the Rangers defence an easy time this season when he's played... Um, the tussle between him and Golton will be interesting at the weekend. It'll be interesting to see how Golton reacts, especially getting subbed to last week. The goalkeeper, and the goalkeeper's the goalkeeper. Obviously, he's got a good rate there, so he is a good keeper. But see, if you look at their form, the green tells you the wins, the grey tells you the draws. I mean, they've, they've been unbeaten, let's say, four or uh, ten matches in the last yeah. ten games. So their form isn't great. Um, so... I they could pose a threat, but I think Rangers are going to be in control with us. Like I was saying, if you've got Lisa Dowell in a middle park with that kind of that, that level of composure on the ball, even Tom Lawrence brings up. Um, mm. I think yeah, I feel pretty safe about Sunday. If I'm being honest, Bobby, quietly confident, yeah. I would say. I I, th- I think it's one of those ones where, and this is no disrespect to Ross County, I think it's one of those fixtures where. I think you're probably going to have more hassle getting up there than the actual pitch. And that's no disrespect to them, you know. Um, The league table doesn't lie, you know. Uh, Guys, I I want to go a different way tonight. I just want to ask you a question. Um, We've seen, obviously, the heroics of last week. Um, Stevie, I haven't spoke to you about the old farm. and, and, And guys that are watching, please press that like button. Please make sure you follow us on Instagram and on the YouTube channel. Please Please, please, just for the algorithm, get the likes up. Stevie, you know you said that, but you said that earlier about sleeping, right? And that they mm-hmm. went to sleep. Unfortunately, that's happened a few times. Rangers have went to sleep. You know, we could talk about Motherwell home and so on and like that. Stevie, like, what is your worry about the Rangers team and this running? I guess it's just it's a title running, and we've not been in a title running for about thirteen years. Yeah, the same kind of play to Celtic as well. To be fair, they've not had a challenge, and you know, we. When we won 55, it was a it was a procession. So, yeah, you're never quite sure how players are going to react to this type of pressure. I mean, look at the Championship in England, like Leeds, Leicester, um, Ipswich. You know, they keep dropping points. You know, they're, like, right there. But the pressure's just doing something to them, and, you know, they're starting to fold. I think that's less relevant in Scotland because of the golfing class, or it should be, because of the level of player we've got compared to, like, Ross County. But at the same time, you, you do wonder. Um, all I would say last week with the, the old fun game... Um, 2-0 down at half-time, you know, under Beal. That, that game was finished. We were never coming back. And even when it went yeah. to 2 each, 3-2 again, we'd normally lost that game. But that, to me, is clear on its effect. You know, he's actually starting to make... And we're never won. Yeah. The fact that we still pulled it back twice to get a point was huge. Um, and that might just kind of signal a change in mentality. So, to me, they are showing more mental toughness than maybe what they would have done previously. Um, so, you're still never... Quite sure, but to me, the signs are definitely promising with that result. 
Okay. Same question to you, Scotty. Um, in the running with the fixtures coming up, I mean, does anything about Rangers or does anything what are you about this running? Um, the thing that worries me about the running is I think I've, I've said this probably since we come back for the international break was treat it like a block of four matches where you had um, Celtic, Dundee, Ross County, etc, etc mm-hmm. and win them. Now, we've drew with Celtic, we've still got two of them left with Ross County and Dundee to play. Win them, we get back top of the league, then it then the pressure's on, basically. The yeah. game um, the game is probably mostly worrying me is um Celtic away. Okay. Naturally. But but I, I want to elaborate on that a wee bit because please if you look at if you look at Celtic's form this season, I mean they're at home to St. Mirren tomorrow. They've got an injury today, he dies in my head idea, it looks as if his season's out. Big player, massive mm-hmm. player. Almost as big as what Sima is to us, I think that's fair to say. Yeah, um, big part of the way they play as well, because he's just a constant runner. So there's no guarantees that Celtic are not going to drop points either, Bobby. Mm-hmm. So, but it's, I, that's what I'm thinking. At and I'm more comfortable with Celtic dropping points at home, at home than what I'm are away from home. I, I love that. I love that statement. I love that statement, Stevie. That's confidence, isn't it? You know, <laughs> Scott is obviously not worried about the rivals. Scott, I'm going to stick with you. I'm going to stick mm-hmm. with you. We've talked about this now. No. Um, if you could just put my team line up, please. I, w- yep. I want to ask you a question, Steve. I'll come to you about this. Um, so, so that's my lineup, guys. And please, if you're watching, guys in the comments, um, you've seen everyone's lineup. So please drop a comment what you'd change or who would you have up front, who would you have left back. In fact, who would be in your starting 11? Um, Scott, I'm going to stick with you here. Um, we- we've talked about the two in the midfield, the holding row and the three in up front. We've talked about Connor Goldson. I just want to ask you about the centre back partnership between Connor Goldson and John Suter. What, what's it's not working. The, 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 thank you. <laughs> there you go. It's not working. <laughs> and why? Well, you've got two rights. Right, so let me put a wee bit of context on this, right? You've got two right sided defenders, with one playing on the left, who's out of position technically, and okay. one playing on the right now. That to me is just a bit of an excuse because. I'm very of the opinion, I'm old-fashioned, I was born in 88, it's a blade of grass. You've picked, it doesn't matter what side, it doesn't matter back end, it doesn't matter new to me. Yep, Nothing I, hear you. I, hear you. I get why we were off balance last weekend, because we had two natural right-footers on the left-hand side, whereas if you've got a, a left-back there, i.e. Ridvan or Borna, it balances things out a wee bit more. But the two of them, are, they've not struck up a partnership this season that's made you go, mm. Oh, M Rangers centre backs are, are outstanding. Mm-hmm. They've no they've got by with it, I would say. Yeah. They barely pass marks, but they've not been outstanding. Suter's a, a calamity in himself at times. He's got that error in him. And Goldson's been underperforming, which is why I probably ring Suter in at centre back and bring Balligan in at left back for that experience and that um balance. So he's yeah, okay. Okay. Balligan's played there, played there before this season and it suited him. He's been fine. Yeah, he's done well. He's Stevie, what's your thoughts on what Scotty says, you know, about the, the partnership? You know, we're not going to label them as to the D, to the dumb, but, you know, so and some other people might say, Scotty, I said this to you. Sorry, beg your pardon, Stevie. I said to Scotty, I said, um, uh, in fact, Scott, I think you said it to me, that like, Goldson's not the most dominant in centre-back. And do, do you know what? I'm going to, I've got ranges up in this high shelf here, right? And I just think to myself, does, does Goldson and Suter, my question to you, Stevie, does Goldson and Suter fear strike fear into strikers' eyes? Can I come in here quickly, Bobby? Yeah, go for it. Go for it. See my favourite saying about Connor Goldson? He's an average defender with exceptional leadership skills. That's Stevie. my opinion in one sense. Stevie, there you go. Coming to that. Mm. I disagree with that, to be honest. I think he's a better defender than you him credit for. I mean, you look a couple of seasons ago, he was in the Europa team of the season he was outstanding in Europe and you like your stats mm-hmm. Scotty so you need to acknowledge that I, I think his form hasn't been great this season I kind of disagree with that and you're right Suter's made a couple of mistakes which sometimes you get away with in his case unfortunately they've led to goals and so it's highlighted um, but he brings a lot to the team um, so a wee bit harsh there I think but yeah they're, you know, they're still our first choice in their backs and the rest of the season 
Yeah, I'm sure it'll be fine. Balgan at left back, good shout. Um, I like your team there as well, Bobby. Um, Sterling, we say Lundstrom, but Sterling's good yeah. because he can just push on. He, he can be up and doing that pitch. You know, he's mm-hmm. in, But yeah, uh, we bit harsh with Scotty on O'Connor. There. No, no, I, I like that. I like that. I like guys in the comments. Do, do you think Scotty's been a bit harsh? And do you know we talk about stats, right? And I saw a comment online, <laughs> and it said stats are like bikinis, and it said that. Yeah. Bikinis show you something that's equal. Uh, shows you something that's interesting, but also doesn't show you that's equally interest. Equally interesting. I've probably butchered that, but see how you said the stats, TV. That that's touched the thing for me. Because he had one good season, is he playing on credit? Are you giving him credit because of what he's done in the past? Should we look at what he's been doing recently? Oh, absolutely. I mean, he's been there for a lot of, what, six, seven years now. And I suppose yeah. it almost goes against him, the fact that, you know, Rangers haven't invested. Like, you look at, mm-hmm. I hate to say this, but you look across the city and they reinvest. They, like, they've got a good turnover of players. They freshen things up. But the Golson hasn't had that, really. You know, even so, yeah. he's been there for a couple of years. So I know he missed that a lot of his first season. But, you know, he's in Balogun's back. You know, we signed him, we signed him. So, you know, that goes against him as well. So, again, I... I don't really like come across as defending the players too much and being too loyal, but you know I think you need to look bigger picture. He's been holding that down himself for a long time, with mm-hmm. the, you know reinforcements coming through the door. I mean, who have we got? Ben Davis. He doesn't get a look in. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah, I'd definitely. <clears throat> Stevie, I, think... I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I, lo- I love still, that, Stevie. I know. I love your stance still on still that. Support Golston, absolutely. No, no, I, I love your stance on that. I love your stance. Scotty, I know you've got something to say to that. So. I, think, I think there's two ways you can look at it, right? I think okay. you can have a, a degree, a certain degree of sympathy for Connor Goldson and say that he's not had a long-term partner while he's been at Rangers, right? He's a Katic, Hollander, Suter, Balogun, just to name a few, okay? Mm-hmm. But I also think that Rangers miss him when he's not in, his, when he's not in the team because of his leadership skills. That doesn't that doesn't make him oh, a starter every week for me. That doesn't yeah. make him. Um, I'm I'm trying I'm trying to balance out what I'm saying here because I'm yeah. paying him a compliment, but at the same time, see if we done out in January and get Scott McKenna in, a left sided centre half who takes absolutely no prisoners. Mm-hmm. That defence would have been sorted the rest of the season. We could have brought him in and loan and signed him in a pre contract, nice and easy done. But we didn't. We didn't even sign a striker. So I think in terms of Connor Goldson's position, he's playing because he needs to play because of them leadership skills. In terms of his his ability yeah. as a defender to play for Rangers, he's had how many good seasons out of five or six? Let's be honest about it. Two maybe. Like I, I suppose you, you could do a, you could do a whole pod on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and do you know what? It's, it's just so interesting to hear. Um, was it called? Um, Stevie's opinion, and obviously yourself opinion. It's, 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 I love that. I love the diverse opinions on that. And um, listen, Aldo, uh, thank you. Welcome, I agree. I, man. I do agree. Sorry, just quickly. I totally agree with Scotty there about his about Connor's organisation, his leadership. Um, he looked at the job his league against Liverpool. As soon as he disappeared, that was it. Like the host just fell in. So mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. very fair on that point. No, guys. Um, I, we've obviously passed the half an hour mark there. Um, guys that have been with us from the beginning, thank you. Make sure you are dropping a like and obviously sharing sharing the channel. Guys, you know, sometimes we don't do predictions and so on and stuff, but um, I just want to go a different way now. Fabio Silva, okay? Now, he's obviously, hopefully he might have his snorkels or his um, diving gear. Um, Scott, I'm going to come to you, right? You said you were old school, so I'm going to come to you first. You know, we've all played football. Stevie, forgive me if you haven't, but you know, it's one of those ones where if he's on your team, he gains an advantage or he gains a something for you. You you, you oversee it, but it's, it's what it is. If it's against you, you hate that kind of stuff. Scotty, going for, you going first. Where do you stand with the, the theatrics? And uh, yeah, let's just call it the theatrics. Right, so diving is a normal thing in the modern game now, right? But, but the way that Fabio Silva behaved on Sunday was not that of a Rangers player, right? Mm-hmm. That's enough to make me say I never want to see him in a Rangers jersey again. 
but that well, was just okay. completely ridiculous. That reminded me of the, the 2003 Porto team that played against Celtic in the UEFA Cup final. Like, diving about nuts everywhere, rolling about the ground. And he obviously thought it was acceptable, but it's not. And I th- he must have been told at half time in the dressing room, somebody must have got a hold of him because he never done it when he came out second half. What I will yeah. say about Fabio Silva on Sunday, Bobby, is he affected the game. Didn't have his best match, but he won as a penalty. He yeah. came out after half time and he'd screwed on the right way and he was like, right, I'm taking this game to Celtic. And that's exactly what he done before he was subbed off. That's what I want to see after Fabio Silva. I don't want to see him cut, getting chopped down and then rolling about as if he's been shot. Mm-hmm. Stevie, you, just for you to come in there. 100% agree. Yeah, just be focused yeah. like he was in the second half and what, what, what a difference he made to the game. Um, you could live, I mean, his, his antics were well out of order. I mean, you, you can't do that. Um, yeah, I, I get maybe some like where well, he's obviously grown up, and that's how they play the game. Like Scotty mentioned, the Porto team in two thousand three, great team, um, but you can't do that. Um, it does not look good, especially on the Rangers team. Um, but yeah, just focus up. Like same with Cantwell, I think sometimes he gets caught up in stuff which he shouldn't get caught up. When he focuses, yeah, he's a much better player. Like he's not angry, get him focused. So we saw that just yeah, keep the head and just do it in the second half, and you'll be fine. I think, um, do, do you know, for me, um, it was, it was when I was watching it, I thought, first I thought, I thought to myself, what are you doing? And then I think to myself, has anyone pulled them in to be like, we don't do this here? You know, like, do, do you know what I'm trying to say, guys? Like, we don't do this. And I think the second half showed, um, he did win a penalty. And, you know, like, we're going to go into the comment you just made there, Stevie, right? About um, Todd Cantwell, uh, when you mentioned him. But I just want to, I just want to get a quick summary on this guy. Penalty to Rangers, right? And, you know, Fabio wins the penalty, right? Fantastic. I don't like the saying that Rangers always get penalties. So, And I said to Matt and the, the Rangers Journal match reaction, and I said, stop fouling players in the box. Stop doing things that will give the referee something to think about. Or, even worse, VAR. Uh, Stevie, I'm going to come to you before I go to Scotty. What's your thoughts on this whole penalty bars and stuff? It was a penalty. I don't want you to go into that, but I want you to, to go into the, the whole thing that, you know, people say Rangers always get a penalty and stuff. And, you know, what's your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, we almost never got a penalty. Again, that's probably partly the silver diving in the first half. But at the end of the day, you know, as you said, knocked the ball past the defender. The defender stuck his leg out, never got the ball, got the man. It's a stone wall penalty. I mean, the, the reaction's crazy. Like, I don't know, somebody posted the, the Sky Sports ref watch, you know, and the three pundits, Stephen Warnock, another two, like, penalty, penalty, penalty. The referee, there's uh, Dermot Gallagher. He's like, yeah, yeah. penalty. You know, you get that kind of, you go down south and they look at it and they're impartial. You know, they've not got any dogs mm-hmm. in the fight. You know, they're just like, yes, yeah, a penalty. Whereas up here, yeah, there's this narrative. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, the referee's this, the referee's that. We'll see him doing the, the Masonic call and it's like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's been for small. It's like water off a duck's back. It doesn't bother me. I just I laugh at it now. You know, yeah. It's just it's, it's, it's Scottish football. It's an absolute madness. But you know, you can't let that get to you. It's just I, laugh at it. I love I guys. Like, Did you notice know, that Stevie thing. smiled all the way through that, and he was just <laughs> smiling? I love that. I love that. Scotty, I'm coming to you. Uh, just obviously the same question that I've asked to Stevie. What, what's your thoughts? It's um, it's a culture in Scottish football now. That's that's that it's became a culture against yeah. the Rangers that we get these supposed penalties now. Most of the pen I think this culture's been created is because Ryan Kent played for us, right? And one of one of the things that Ryan Kent was able to do was beat a man in a box. Right. So that's where most of our penalties over the years have came from. It was Ryan Kent's ability on the ball to get beyond, cut back, go either way with the football. And eventually, it would always get half. Now, I'm not saying that happened every time, but I'm saying most of the time under Steven Gerrard, when we won a penalty, it was always Ryan Kent that won it because of that quick change of direction he's got in low centre of gravity. Now, since then, since the 55 season, it's carried on and it's created a culture that doesn't really surprise you, but you, you get a bit fed up by hearing about it, to be brutally honest mm-hmm. with you. That how can anybody sit and say that the referees in this country can't be, can be impartial? That... Because one might go home and put a Celtic tap on means that he's going to give a decision against the Rangers. I, I don't believe any. I saw nonsense to me and always yeah. has been. Right? Yeah. 
and I think that's something that needs called out within Scottish football. It's but again, it's also what makes Scottish football unique is because you've got this rivalry and because you've got the conspiracies and all this kind of type of stuff. You know yeah. what I mean? It's, it's what brings entertainment to it. Um, it's not entertainment I can necessarily be bothered with because it's something that I look at and go, oh, Christ, that again. And Rangers getting penalties and it being in the news or on Clyde One or any sort of broadcasting that it's happened again when Celtic have had more penalties than us this season or the exact same amount of penalties. It's not our fault that they can't score theirs and we can <laughs> score who. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> And, and, and do you know what, guys? I'm so glad you answered that freely and openly because, you know, um, it's, it's crazy to think that we all watch the same game of football. <laughs> you know, we've all watched the same thing. We've not edited anything. It's a foul. A foul's a foul. At the end of the day, if the defender makes, or if the defensive player uh, in the box concedes a foul, the, the, the award is a penalty. And I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, guys, we're just over the 41 mark. We're going to wrap up very soon. Stevie, uh, I never like to ask, in fact, I lie. I do like to ask score predictions and who scores. So that's a complete lie. Stevie, you know, we've seen your team, okay? We've talked about we're going to be confident and dominative in possession. Let's hope the climate change will not affect the way of playing football. <laughs> um, you've obviously got Matondo as your key player. Stevie, where are we getting the goals from? Where are we getting the goals from? For Sunday, I think Dessers, um, maybe yeah. a race. Um, I expect a couple okay. of assists for Matondo, uh, setting up Dessers, maybe Silva as well. I think three, maybe four, um, three or four, no, three or four, one, go four, one, um, four, one. I like it, yeah. I like it. Four, one, Dessers, brace. I love that, Scotty. Awesome. Uh, I'm going to go two now, Rangers, Lawrence Shanklin, double. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, man. I'm kidding. Man. <laughs> I think Dessert is going to um, continue his, his good form in morning. He's not in good goal-scoring form, but in terms of player performance, he's in good form. In terms of doing a job for the team, he's in good form. Um, I think Dessert on Sunday is going to get a couple. I think Dibble might even chip in. Matondo is going to continue scoring. Seema can score. Anybody in that team that I pick can score. Yeah, but I'm going to go 4-0. Dessert's double. Tavernier penalty. And Kieran Dibble goal. I love that, I love that. And I think for me, uh, after listening to you both, uh, I think it's going to be a route. I'm, I'm, I'm saying 5-0, and the reason I say 5-0 is because everything we've just discussed today, you know, with the frustration of the players, the focus of wanting to just go and just play, and, like, you know, I've played football myself, you have all played football, you just want to play the game, and I just feel like um, you, you want to go out and punish the next opposition. You know, and also you want to send a message from the last game to be like, you know, that wasn't a fluke, by the way. We're in this league and we want to win. You, and it goes as sounds the same. So I'm going to say five now. It could get clipped up. I don't really care because I, I think Rangers are more than capable. Now, to, to, to conclude this, guys, I just want to thank you all for watching us and I appreciate the gentleman's comp, uh, company, Stevie and Scotty. Guys, Shanklin, I just want to ask you this off the bat. Okay. Has he. Has he missed the opportunity to play for Rangers with not coming in January? Stevie, I'll go to you first. I think there was about as much chance of Rangers signing Shankland in January as there was a Dundee getting some new drains. So that was never going to happen. But <laughs> Scott, can we clip that and put that right? <laughs> I'm confident that we're going to get him in the summer. Yeah, I think he'd, I think he'd walk along the M8 to sign for Rangers. So, yeah, I'm sure he'll be there. I'll go pick and, him up now. You know, he'll be there. And Stevie, Stevie, to add to that, is he your main striker? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Scottish Scott, is he's a proven goal scorer. He's got everything we need. I love that, Stevie. Thank you, St Scotty. Remember, Stevie he caught a pie, you know, mate. I mean, my room with Curry. I flung it back at his hands. Absolute stuff of dreams, right there. Uh, I think there's more of a chance signing this in the summer than what there was in January because of the fee. I think the fee is going to be reduced. Mm -hmm. I think I'm be looking at two, two and a half million, and I'll bring him in to be a part of a striking department, a new striking department without Serial Dessers and Kimaru. Um, for me, with bringing Shankland in, it brings you that security knowing that there's going to be goals scored in the league. I wouldn't be shouting about it if we still had Tony, uh, Tony, Tony goals at the club. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be shouting about Shankland at all because you've got that proven goal scorer, somebody of that outcome wanting with Danilo and uh, 
a player trading model striker. Somebody that we can bring in, build up, make good, send away for a bigger fee. Then everybody's happy, really, aren't they? Well, there you go, guys. Uh, we're going to sign our 20 goal striker in the summer, hopefully. Um, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I have been joined with Stevie and Scotty. Um, guys, as I said earlier, please like and share, follow on Instagram, follow on Twitter, and also, most importantly, please follow us on YouTube. Stevie, can you please let the guys know where they can find you, sir? On this pod. I'm exclusive to Rangers Journal, nowhere else. <laughs> and also, Stevie, can you also tell the guys how you keep that beard intact? Look at that. Look at that. It's beautiful, sir. Absolutely I've got, beautiful. I've got about four combs. I've got one that pocket. <laughs> one in my back pocket. I love that. I love that. I love that. Stevie, thank you so much for your company today. No, it's Gary to too, Harry. Pocket. Gary, please let the guys know where they can find you. Hey, so they can find me on Twitter. That's my tagline. Find me over at a Gallant View, Rangers Assessment, Stan's Ibrooks. I'm on there every podcast going. Um, but Busy guy. <laughs> aye. But mostly they're going to find me here, taking the Rangers love Journal to new levels. That's where they'll find me, that. Bobby. Love that, love that. Guys, and I've been your host tonight. I am Bobby Wansey. That is my app on all socials. Thank you so much for chopping up with us. We have been the Rangers Journal. Good night. God bless. Mm-hmm.